so the question is, uh, so here, you know, the, you might believe that uh, that uh, t marijuana would cause some of the same consequences, maybe not to the same quantitative extent, but at least qualitatively, and that is not an implausible belief, but so you have to gather evidence to, to determine whether or not it's true. There are differences between marijuana and tobacco. Marijuana contains a number of constituents not found in tobacco that might have counter countervailing effects, and also it's smoked in far less quantity than tobacco, but not, not always. So the first question is whether regular smoking of marijuana is a risk factor for the development of COPD. So let's look at the uh, evidence. Well, I presented these data before, so I'll go very quickly. We uh, received some funding from the federal government uh, many, many years ago, uh, actually in the late 70s. Uh, and so we just had to actually address this question. And the way we did that was to recruit uh, a convenience sample, volunteers from the community who responded to advertising, who smoked marijuana heavily, meaning at least a joint a day, uh, for at least five years. And uh, as a matter of fact, we, uh, we managed to recruit uh, people who smoked on the average three joints a day for 15 years. And uh, so we were 400 of them, uh, about evenly divided between smokers of marijuana only, MS, and smokers of marijuana plus tobacco. Plus we had some controls, some non-marijuana smoking tobacco smokers and some non-smokers, and they were in their early 30s. Uh, and just to prove that they were heavy smokers, they, a joint year is the number of joints uh, per day smoked times the number of years smoked, and we see about, on the average, 50 joint years, meaning about three joints a day for f 15 years or so. So these were very heavy smokers. Uh, the rationale here was that if we couldn't find, if we failed to find any evidence of harmful effects from heavy smoking, uh, at least we couldn't be uh, criticized for not having studied smokers of sufficient amounts of marijuana to produce such effects. So these uh, uh, subjects, these volunteers, underwent a number of procedures, including the administration of a questionnaire that got at their drug use and their respiratory symptoms, practically every lung function test known to man, and a large subset of them underwent a procedure in which you place a lighted scope into the tracheobronchial tree. You can see as far as about the third division or fourth division of the, the bronchial tree into the lobar and segmental bronchi, and then assess effects on the lining, the visual effects on the lining cells uh, of, the, of the airways. We actually we videotaped uh, the, uh, the endoscopic procedure. We, we also uh, retrieved cells and fluid from the lung and also took biopsies. So what did we find? Well, and we reported this a long time ago. This is not new, but there is some new data, which is why I bring it up again. So here back 20 years ago, we reported that in this particular convenience sample, compared to non-smokers, smokers of marijuana only had a fairly high uh, uh, prevalence of symptoms of um, chronic bronchitis, meaning chronic cough, cough for most days for at least three months out of the year for, th for two or more successive years, with sputum and wheeze on at least uh, th three weeks, uh, three weeks uh, out of the year. So these are symptoms of chronic bronchitis. And the tobacco smokers, on the average, they smoked uh, about a pack a day, 22 cigarettes a day, had a similar, a similar proportion of them had the same symptoms, and we didn't see any, any additive effects. There was also an increased incidence of acute uh, bronchitic uh, episode. So that told us that marijuana smoking does indeed cause the symptoms of or is associated with the symptoms of chronic bronchitis. Well, that's just one study. You like studies to be replicated. In the same year, a study was reported from Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. It was an epidemiologic study. A, 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 we used a convenient sample. These investigators actually took a random sample, stratified sample of the population of, of uh, Phoenix, but they were younger individuals, and they smoked marijuana far less than ours. Ours, 55 joint years, there is about eight joint years. And they found qualitatively the same results. A higher proportion of marijuana smokers than non-smokers had symptoms, chronic respiratory symptoms, particularly sputum and wheeze. And in their case, the tobacco smokers had more, a higher proportion of them had symptoms, and there was some additivity. Uh, possibly these differences are due to the differences in the amounts of marijuana smoke between the two studies. 
Uh, this past year, another study was reported from New Zealand. This was also a convenient sample uh, of uh, smaller numbers of subjects than we studied, and they found results very similar to ours. A higher proportion of marijuana-only smokers uh, compared to non-smokers complained of symptoms of cough, sputum, uh, and wheeze. Uh, and in their sample, similar to proportion of tobacco smokers uh, reported the same symptoms without any additive effects. So I think on the basis of these three studies, there actually is another one from the South Island of New Zealand that shows similar results, that you would have to believe that yes, that uh, regular smoking of marijuana, particularly heavy smoking, is associated with chronic cough and sputum production. Now, why is that? Well, if you do bronchoscopy, uh, you find that the, the appearance of the lining of the airways uh, in the normal non-smoker is, as is shown here, pale uh, mucosa uh, without any swelling. You see a sharp definition here. This is the bifurcation of two airways. Occasionally you'll see some redness, probably due to the trauma of the bronchoscope or coughing. This is what you see in the typical heavy marijuana smoker. You see uh, an, a, evidence of swelling and increased redness. In fact, if you do biopsies, the swelling is associated with edema in the airway and a wall, and the redness increased number uh, of blood vessels, something we call angiogenesis. Uh, and tobacco smokers uh, show the same thing, with increased secretions as well, also found in the marijuana smokers. So this, these uh, photographs were taken from the large airways. If we take biopsies from these airways, you find that the normal cells that line the airway are columnar in appearance and they have these cilia. And the cilia uh, move the mucus which is secreted from mucus glands toward the mouth. The mucus traps particulates, including bacteria, etc., to prevent them from reaching the lower respiratory tract. With marijuana smoking, as with tobacco smoking, there is a, a replacement of these cells with mucus secreting surface epithelial cells and so-called reserve cells and a complete disorganization of these cells. This is known as squamous metaplasia. And these changes uh, result in the chronic cough that uh, the, uh, 20% of marijuana smokers complain of. If you remove, if you eliminate, damage the ciliated epithelial cells and increase the number of mucus secreting cells, you're going to increase the production of mucus and diminish the capacity of the lung to move that mucus toward the mouth you, by the normal ciliary action, leaving cough as the only mechanism to clear the airway. And that's the reason that tobacco smokers and marijuana smokers tend to have chronic cough. However, chronic bronchitis or uh, chronic cough is not identical to COPD. This is a very frequent misconception. COPD has been defined, redefined recently, as a disease of airflow obstruction. And the major symptom of COPD is exertional dyspnea, dyspnea on effort that gets worse and worse over time and becomes disabling and may lead to respiratory failure and death. That does not happen with chronic bronchitis in the absence of airflow obstruction. So COPD is defined as not fully reversible airflow obstruction. So there are structural changes that are relatively fixed, but they can respond partially to bronchodilator therapy. But the major uh, characteristic of COPD is an excessive loss of lung function as one grows older. Normally, there is a slight loss because of the aging effect on the lung, but this becomes accelerated, magnified in someone destined to develop COPD. And, and this is the result of structural changes due to an inflammatory response to the noxious components within tobacco smoke. In order to diagnose COPD, you have to perform a test known as spirometry. And what this test does is it measures the amount of air that is expe expressed from the lung after taking a deep breath and blowing out forcibly in one second. So we hear the forced expired volume in one second. And uh, here we see it in a COPD patient. This is the normal FEV1, which is age and gender adjusted. And then uh, you relate it to the, to the total amount of air that's blown out, known as the vital capacity. And this ratio should be greater than 70%. If it's less than 70%, in this case it's 60%, and there's no evidence of asthma, then the patient most likely has COPD. So I think in the interest of time, I'm just going to skip over some of these slides and uh, then get to emphysema. <clears throat> 